Welcome to the Everyday Mom Challenge. Today I want to talk with you guys about how to use a GPA calculator when you are creating your transcripts for your child. Now this is also an excellent tool for all of my incoming freshmen out there that are in the public school systems because in the, in the middle school you didn't really focus on your GPA. Well in high school it's about that GPA and one of my students actually showed me this calculator and we played around with it all semester and it is accurate or I wouldn't be showing it to you. I matched it up with their um, actual GPAs and I want to show you how to do this. So how I found it is just gpacalculator.net but I actually just went online and I typed in GPA calculator. So when you come here, we're just going to make for a freshman. Now let's say they made an A. You change these to ones. Don't put A pluses or A minuses. Just stick with the ABCD system. Um, here's what's very important. Now my child took an AP class in ninth grade and he passed the AP placement test. But after he went through that class, he did not want to take another AP class in 10th grade. So in order for you to understand how the differences of this stuff works, play around with regular honors AP. And this one is if you get the college credits. Um, but my child is in honors and look what happens to that weight. You see that? But now let's look at our regular. So my child took English one honors, but he took world history. And you don't even have to go through and do the whole um, thing because it's just for you. You're going to transfer this over to your actual transcript that you're making for your child. Well, he took an AP test and did well on it. So I'm giving him that AP credit and look at there, 4.75. But then if he comes in here, and he took um, journalism and he had his own blog and was doing articles. But that was a regular class. That was not an honors or anything like that. And it brings it down. So what happens is it becomes a weighted GPA system. And, and guys, I'm sorry, but I'm not that mathematically crafted in order to be able to determine what these scores are on my own without this calculator. So I think that this is a very useful tool. It's also good when you're trying to convince your child that they need to take more rigorous coursework. So play around with what it looks like between honors, what it looks like between AP, and what it looks like between regular. And show them what happens to their GPA. Also play around with these scores. So let's say you have a student who in middle school um, had A's in certain subject, B's or C's or even D's. Um, and you want to show them what happens between the D's to the C's or what happens between the C's and the B's. It can give them a great work ethic, a goal, because they'll get to see what their number would look like if they continued on their trajectory. Meaning you need to study more, let's come up with a plan, and then the GPA will go up and here's how it will go up. Because what happened with my freshmen, now I'm talking about my freshmen that I taught in the public schools, not my freshmen here at home school. Um, but what happened with my freshmen in public schools is that they didn't quite grasp how difficult it would be if they started with C's and D's <laughs> to actually move that up. Because in their mind, you know, they want to go to a D1 school, they want to go to a big school. Uh, some of them are spouting they want Ivy League schools. And then when they start putting in their 2.5s, they put in their 2.0s and a 1.8s. And then they start looking at it. And then we just kept doing ad courses. At, oh, so you have, to, you have to go in. But what happens is we just kept playing around. And we kept saying, well, what if you were in here and... Um, Let me show you how to add courses. And so then when we added a course, we kept adding. So we did like the next semester 
projected scores. Could you make a commitment if you could make an A in this earth and environmental science, or could you make an A in this world history? Well, now you understand what's the difference between that and honors. And then we went to guidance. Um, I had a kid move from regular to honors because they were doing so well. I mean, this is what you need to be doing. You need to be playing around with this stuff and play around with it early. Don't wait until you get your four weeks progress report. Go ahead and start playing around with it um, bef even in the summertime because it will allow you to see what your calculations are going to be, but it will also kind of give you something to work towards and something to steer clear from. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't think that... Um, in my mind, that this causes a tremendous stress on people because the more planned you are, actually, the better you are at addressing the issues. If you go in with a subject in mind and you say, well, maybe math is not my best subject or science is not my best subject or English is not my best subject, well, then that's when you understand if you're going to make a B in that, how can you make the B turn into an A and you can increase your GPA um, and so go after those honors classes as much as you can. Take as many of the AP as you can, because I'm going to show you what you do now when you go to College Board. So when you go to College Board, you can come up here, you can hit your search, and you can go to the colleges of your choice. When you come to the colleges at a glance, go to Applying, go to Academics and GPA, scroll all the way down, and that will show you the percentages of students that are incoming uh, freshmen and what their calculated GPAs are. And then you try it out for your top five schools. So you do the same thing, you're all the way down, and now you see the difference here. And you see that plus sign, which means a lot of them are going to have the weighted GPAs, they're going to be taking a lot of the AP, the dual college credit courses. And so you have to really figure out what are these colleges, what are they going to be looking for? And I won't, maybe I'm wrong, but this person right here is probably a star athlete. <laughs> so right here, check it out. Go up here, type in another school for your choice. Your college board. So easy to check these things out. And I think that as a middle schooler going up into high school, this is important. Even if you don't know what your top five colleges are, you still can look at colleges in your state and kind of get an estimation. So now you can see how this range comes here, which is comparative to this range a little bit. Um, but this needs to, to not be done after the four weeks or after the nine week reporting period because then you already have it set in stone and your first GPA numbers are calculated. You've got to work from um, your Q1 average, Q2 average, and then you've got to go towards your uh, exam. So I would uh, suggest that you start playing around um, from this early on so you can see how to schedule your classes and which one should be honors AP or regular and then um, what you should be working towards as far as your grades. So I hope that this helped. Um, I'm really um, thankful that I'm, I have an opportunity to find some of these resources out and share it with you guys. So if you know any other GPA calculators or anything that works well, please comment below. Have a blessed day.